had it up to date. Yeah. You know. Yeah. No, we, we try and do one. We try and do one every day. Yeah. Um, just so it, it's like I said in one of the first videos, we try and be very transparent on the cars, what we're doing, so people can see. Because if you got this car back with the nose on it, it'd be okay. Great. What did you do? But I mean. Well, yeah. I mean. This is you can, you can see everything we do in the videos. Yeah. This this is Ted. He owns the 37 Chevrolet. Hi, Austin. How are you? Uh, <laughs> he, uh, the 5th of July, we're down here at work. Well, everybody else is closed, but we're, yeah, we're, we're still doing gone. stuff. Not working today. This really came out great. They did a wonderful job. And uh, I'm impressed. I'll be able to tell a few friends. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that very much. Yeah, it's a beautiful setup. Oh, really. I know it's going to be really, really safe. I know you did a lot of documentation on it to get yeah. it to that point. Well, my buddy came in the other day, Mark Folks on Smarks Automotive, and he goes, wow, he says, that looks like a professional did it. I'm like, well, yeah. really? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, really? That's yeah, what you well, want. Yeah, we do. Yeah. So, but, yeah. um, but we're, we've got uh, parts coming for the 88 GMC truck that I've got. That We're doing a whole four-link suspension and all tubular front suspension like okay. this as well. Yeah. So that one's going to be even more in depth than this car. Really? Um, but we got got the sway bar in, Matt was doing that this morning, and that's that's about it. We'll, yeah. Like I said, we gotta re relocate the radiator a little bit to make up for the steering rack, yeah. and then put the nose back on it, and yeah. we're good. Four caliper pistons, I'm, that kind of surprised me. I yeah. know you've got. Well, there will, well, there's two pistons here, and then there's two pistons on the other side. So most calipers have the one piston, yeah. which draws the other side of the caliper in with it. This actually has two pistons on each side, and they both press equally on the brake pads instead of dragging yeah. one to the side. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I was telling you earlier today, that I came in here with the drum brakes on it, and I even put a vacuum uh, pump in the right. trunk, you know, to come in off the master yes. cylinder to get more pressure because of the cam that's in the motor. Right. And uh, it was so hard to stop. I had a Thunderbird like that that had just, with the cam that we put in it, it was the biggest cam you could put in a street motor, basically. Yeah. And uh, it just, it took my brakes away. They were gone. Yeah. So I had to put, I, I put the electric motor in it that would kick on at 15 pounds and off at 18 yeah. pounds. So it'd, yeah. it'd give you some, but I hated the noise it made. Oh, you know, yeah. It just kept hear <laughs> it. Yeah. I guess that's still going to be operative. Yeah, yeah. Still yep. up here to it. Yep. Just it and there. also what we're doing is your uh where they are, they're around here somewhere. You're to take the nose off the car, you, you there's no connections for the headlight wires. They're they're just kind of wired oh, together. Okay. So I'm putting that side has five, this side has two. So I bought weather pack connectors. And they make it so if you ever have to take the nose off the car, oh. just unplug it. Okay. So because it's either that or splice them all back together, and I don't want to do that. So what's this light bulb here? That's it. That's your marker light. Oh, yeah, yeah. for that little guy yeah. down there. Yep. Yeah. See this yeah. this this side has two and the marker light and a ground. Okay. Uh, so we're gonna put uh, we're gonna put a connector on this. Okay. And then a connector where it comes out, so you can reach in there easily and in. unplug it. Yeah. Hopefully I don't have to take it off again. Yeah. My wife thought I put it on the last time after the motor was rebuilt. Yep. The guy that built it, Ray Valero in Sacramento. I went and saw him in the morning. I said, I'm bringing the motor to you. Said, well, I closed at 4. And it went to 4.4. Four. Wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's a good little car. Just, I really like it. Well, now, now it's going to be drivable. So. Well, that, and the safety factor, that's pretty Right. I know your wife was concerned about that. She oh, was full of eyes. Yeah, she was saying that every time you left in the car, that she wasn't, she wasn't well, having I know good feels coming back about it. Rock. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was pretty bad. Really nice. It's going to be really nice. Even without, I mean, just the manual steering and no power rack, it's still going to steer really good. Yeah, it will. Because, see, the motor's set back behind it. It's not, it's not sitting right over Other the front wheel, wheels, so... It'll, it'll yeah, be good. True. It's going to turn easier when it's moving. Mm -hmm. they, they always do. I mean, yeah, when you're sure. sitting in a parking lot, it's still going to yeah. be yeah. a little bit of work. But. Good deal. Yeah. So you have it done this afternoon, right? <laughs> <laughs> it'll, be, it'll definitely be done this week. I know. We just, It'll rain by the end of the weekend. Yeah. 
rain hoods come to come with the trailer and pick it up. Yep. No windshield wipers. Yeah. This is my 41. I don't have wipers in it. I'm like, you don't need them, and just don't, you know, if you get caught in the rain, pull over. If you're driving yeah. a hot rod, you obviously got some time on your hands to yeah. pull over. You don't, you know, you're not in a commute going to work. Really good, Jim. Good okay. job. I'm glad you like it. Yep. Very nice. I like all the bling, too. I mean, oh, yeah. you know, when, when you look in there, the way it was before, you had coil springs and upper and lower A arms and everything, but now you look in and there's bits of aluminum and billet. Oh, and, yeah. You know, it just. It flashes. It's, it's flashy, exactly. Yeah. And functional. Nice. Yeah. And it did not have a sway bar before, right? Yes. It, it did? Remember, it's yeah, all over there. It's all over there yeah. on the pallet. It's taking a little longer than I figured, but it it's something that we've never done on this car. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh, so yeah. it was yeah. each each step that we had to do was pretty important, and I wanted to make sure that everything was measured out right. Yeah, like so I can tell, my wife, is, these guys are very meticulous. It may cost us a bunch. Well, but it's uh, going to be right. I also bought uh, stainless steel brake lines for it because we yeah. yours yours was here because the yeah. calipers were on the front. Mm -hmm. We're mounting a tab here, and then I got there actually for a Sunbeam Tiger, um, but it was they were the right length. I needed right. 15 inch, yeah. you know, to make up for when the wheel turns right. and, and whatnot. So yeah. that'll look pretty slick too. Yours, I was going to call you and tell you bring the other ones back, but then I remembered that one was kinked. Mm -hmm. So. They won't be well, able actually, to. I was able to take a pair of pliers and open it up. Did you? Yeah. Okay. Got yeah, a guy that called me last night. Wants to buy the other ones. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. In North, will you ship to North Carolina? The whole unit? Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, he wants he wants to buy the disc brake set. He wants to buy oh, the okay. disc brake. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that would be kind of cost prohibitive. Oh, too. It's super heavy. Yeah. I mean, he could go to. Speedway or something yeah. like that, and just get that set up. It was, yeah. it, it's a pretty common setup. Just that single piston caliper. Yeah, yeah and sure it is. Yeah. He says he wants to put it on a '65 Mustang. It'll fit. Yeah, no problem at all. Yep. Yeah. Okay, I'll let you go. All right, man. Good enough. Cool. I'm glad you're happy. Oh yeah. Sure the result's gonna be good. <laughs> Not too worried about it. Neither am I. I mean, at first it was like, okay, 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 do this and do that, and is this right? Is that right? And then once it started coming together, it, it, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. It has to be straight across. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, you can't have any tolerance there. Uh uh. That's what makes it. Yeah. That's your starting point right there. Cross -member. Yeah, once once that was tacked in, everything else is, you know, the, the front end guy will have to do, you know, your alignment with oh your yeah. upper, upper control arms. Yeah. And Get the tires straight on the road. Yep, yep. And we're going to do what, I mean, basically it's called a hot rod alignment. They reference the rear wheels to the front wheels because yeah. there's no specs oh, no. on this yeah. car to align it. So just when the machine says it's straight, it's straight. Yeah. Pretty nice. And it's cool that we've got a guy right next door that can do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, I've paid for two of these uh, alignments already, and neither one of them worked out because of what junky junk. Right. Now, you had the car since 96. Oh, at least. Did it always drive bad? It actually drove good. Really? Yeah. Until Chuck and I decided we're going to put disc brakes disc on it. Okay. And that system that you took off. Nothing was working, nothing was matched up. Right. I had a upper ball joint, no, lower ball joint for the to go to the steering rack there. And I bought it from Speedway, and we had to actually weld an extension onto it so it would reach right. the threads on the, on the manual uh, steering. It, I mean, it was just, we tried our best to get it I right. Was, I was gonna do a Mustang 2 kit on the front of that, and it was just too much cobble. You know, they don't have a direct, like this is, 
specifically made for yeah. 37 and 38s. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's it's a mainstream car. It's old school hot rod. I prefer muscle cars, but this this was the era before the muscle car era, yeah. and this is what everybody made a hot rod out of was a Chevy yeah. coupe. Yeah. So parts availability and things you need are, are I mean, it's pretty much readily available. Yeah. Very good. I hear that cat crying. <laughs> All done. What's up, YouTube? So we got the uh, sway bar painted last Friday, and uh, come in early this morning and got it all mounted up, squared it up, tightened it up. So now we just gotta figure out the steering shaft here. We gotta fabricate something to reach back there to the collar. But other than that, it's almost done. And we gotta uh, mount the brake lines and further back back there in the frame. Should be ready to do some skids. Aussie style skids. Yeah, that's where we're at this morning. Cut. I'm gonna try that shredder. Alright, today we're finally going to put the trailer together so I can get it out of here. Um, this is like my mower, another tornado victim. We got, a, we got a new cap to go on it, a bunch of extruded aluminum and whatnot. It's inside because it's not really watertight with a big chunk of the front missing, so we're going to take care of that right now. <laughs> Somebody tried to put this on before and they did it incorrectly, so that's why we got to take all the old silicone off and we've got this here. Which all my bus buddies will know, we've, we've used this for building buses when I was in the body shop uh, for Connecticut Transit. This is uh, Silcaflex. This is a sealant and a glue that actually works so well we used to have to pull the damaged sides off of buses with an airport tug and a chain so it ain't coming off We actually bought this when we were doing the undercoating on Cindy's Cornet, and it worked awesome for that, but as it turns out, it's got a lot of uses. You can get these wheels in different, I guess I don't want to say grits, but because it's metal, it's not grits, but uh, there's heavy, light, and, and coarse. Um, we're just using a medium wheel right now to take, take the silicone off of this and get it ready to glue it back on.
just make sure you put your tools down someplace where you're going to lose them so you can spend time looking for them after. See, now, now we can go back and reference the video. Where's that tool? Okay. Uh, this goes over the top of that metal. Um, so I'm going to get up there and mark where the holes are so I don't reuse them again. I don't want to reuse the same hole now because I couldn't find number 14. I could only find 12s long enough to go through metal, wood, plastic, and into that metal. Um, but it, it's a piece of extruded aluminum goes over it and you screw through that and then in this. So I'll get up there and mark all that. These tuck in behind there. That is, that's really the only part that's really the only part that goes inside anything. Everything else just sits on the top. Give me that tool in the airline. There you go. I, I gotta clean that whole top off. Okay. Un, un, untangle that from everything. Cocking gun around somewhere? Huh? Is the blue cocking gun around somewhere? I haven't this... seen it yet. I'll keep looking. Okay. 